Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sarah Hunstead. I am a paediatric nurse, mum of two, author of A Life, A Finger, A Pee Up A Nose, A Practical Guide to Baby and Child First Aid, and I'm founder of CPR Kids. And today we're talking about water safety. Did you know that in children aged zero to four years, that for every child last year in this age group who drowned fatally, that there were eight more non-fatal drowning incidences. That for this particular age group, that the leading place of drowning is backyard swimming pools, closely followed by the bathtub or spas, and of course, other places such as inland waterways. Um, you know, thinking about things we've got around the house, such as buckets of water, rivers, Places like that, anywhere that there are bodies of water is a place that a child can drown. For this particular age group as well, the zero to four year olds, falls into water are uh, the number one activity that, that happens before a child drowns. So they're falling into these bodies of water. And it's just something that we need to be so aware of. I think in Australia, that we can certainly be you know aware of the need to prevent drowning and to watch our kids in the water but it's so ingrained in a lot of us to be around water all the time that sometimes we can get a little bit complacent so today on this facebook live we're going to be talking about just a select group of areas that we can really do need to remember particularly at the moment in australia now before we go any further if you could give me a wave or a thumbs up to let me know that you are hearing and seeing me well that would be absolutely fantastic and remember at cpr kids we love to bring you these facebook lives what we want to do is bring you good fantastic accurate evidence-based information so that you can make good health decisions for your kids and this is our first facebook live of the year and what i'd love for you to do is put in the comments below anything any subjects you would like us to bring you and talk about so please pop them in the comments below and feel free to ask questions while we're on this live as well so let's start today what i really want to talk to you about is prevention around the home now i could talk to you for about i don't know three days um, with all the things that we can do about preventing drowning um, but we're really going to focus on a couple of areas today there are lots and lots of resources out there um, checklists all sorts of things that you can go through particularly for the home and we will put the links to those in the comments below um, but because you probably don't have 50 hours to be watching me today do this um, we're going to really stick to a couple of areas now the first area of course and this goes without saying is that we can't prevent all accidents um, sometimes the things happen and so we can do as much as we possibly can we need to really minimize the risk sometimes we can't eliminate it and so therefore knowing what to do is so important please if you don't know cpr enroll in a pediatric cpr course today don't put it off any longer because can you imagine if an accident did happen a drowning incident and you didn't know what to do so please know what to do in case of an emergency now and of course prevention is better than cure it always 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 is when you think about you know as i said before that the leading cause of fatal drowning um, in children under the age of four is um, the swimming pool of course making sure all of these obvious things that we think about that the pool gate is secure that um, you know there are no pot plants or chairs that can be pushed up against the gate that they can climb on top of you may have seen recently a video that has gone viral um, a woman filmed her son uh, actually crawling on top of a toy you know those cars that kids can sit in they use their feet and they go around 
her very, and I was about to say clever, because you know, obviously is clever, but kids will do this, um, regardless of whether they're clever or not, that they will actually, if they want to get into that water, they will find a way of being able to do it. So he climbed on top of the roof of this car, he unlatched the gate, let his younger sibling in, and this child, he looked no more than three. The younger sibling was definitely, you know, less than, that, definitely younger than that. And both they went into the pool area. Of course, mum stopped them, but she put this on social media to show people how easy it is for kids. They watch you. They know how to do this. They're clever at this kind of stuff. I remember my oldest daughter, she could undo a childproof lid off the top of a medication when she was about three. I was astounded that she could do that. She watched, she watched me do that and she learned how to do it too. So please, just because we think something is childproof doesn't mean that it is. It's really important. Okay, so what's really important is that we, sorry, I've just had a little there's something come up on my screen my apologies for this we will keep the Facebook live going okay so what we also need to consider is obviously entry making sure that the pool gate is absolutely fine okay making sure that we have not relying just on that pool gate there are lots and lots of other things out on the market that you may want to choose from nets that cover your pool to an alarm when the pool gate gets opened all of these other things that are adjuncts to that. Of course, we've got Lori Lawrence, who Kids Alive do the five. Absolutely, that is 100% um, what we need to be doing. If you don't know what that is, I'm gonna put a link to it down the bottom. But the main thing that I wanted to talk to you about today is around the home. We have certainly here in where I am in Sydney, we have water restrictions in place, level two water restrictions. Um, in so many places around Australia, we're up to level four, level six water restrictions. And what that means is certainly in my house as well, we are keeping buckets everywhere to collect water. We've got a bucket in the shower um, that we collect water with. We've got a bucket in the kitchen sink so that when we, if we're you know, cleaning the dishes, that, that water can go and get chucked on the lawn. Um, certainly I've left the bath water in my children are older but after they've both had a bath in there I've left the water in with the plug in to then be able to decant that into buckets and put it out into the garden so at CPR kids we have always said as soon as the baby comes out plug comes out you cannot leave the water in there particularly if you've got toddlers we're in a position in you know our environment at the moment where we may be needing to do that so what I encourage you to do is think about in your home how you are collecting water at the moment with all of these water restrictions around. What do you have? Do you have a bucket in your shower? Because remember, it only takes five centimetres of water and 20 seconds for a child to drown. There's an ambulance going past. Um, certainly and it seems to have just stopped outside. I hope whoever it is is okay. Um, but we need to think about these drowning risks that may not have been in our houses even a month or two ago. Also thinking about, um, we got back from holidays uh, uh, you know, about a week ago and there had been, you know, thank goodness, a bit of a downpour of rain. We had big pot plants that had actually died. We'd taken the plants out and we had the pots in the backyard they'd filled up with about that much of water when we came home after holidays. That is a drowning risk because remember toddlers especially, they are heavy in their heads. So no offense to the toddlers, but their heads are massive. They're a third the size of their body. But if they fall into something, they can't actually, they don't have the upper body strength to be able to get themselves out. They're weighted like that. So if a toddler falls into a bucket, they can't get out. So please, whether you take anything away from this live today, what I encourage you to do the most is please go around your house. You may be collecting water in different ways than what you have been lately. 
please think about those risks. So if you're leaving the bath water in to put it on the lawn, make sure that you're emptying that quickly. How can you secure your home where the water is so that your toddler can't get into that area? Do you need to not leave it till later? Do you need to, as soon as that shower's off, be picking up that bucket and pouring it straight out on the lawn? How are you storing your pots and your buckets in your backyard? Are you turning them upside down or are you collecting rainwater out there? Think about these things and minimize the drowning risk. Completely understand that we need to be collecting water at the moment, but think about the risk in your home and how you are going to keep your young kids away from that. And the other thing in the backyard that sometimes we often forget about too is the inflatable pools. Certainly where I live in Sydney, it's hot at the moment. It has been really hot. It's hot and sticky and you know we need ways to cool off. Inflatable pool in the backyard, even one of those clamshell pools that you put the water in, as soon as your child has finished playing in it, tip it out because, and we're thinking of the way you were storing it. Are you storing it so that rainwater is collecting in it or are you tipping it up and keeping it on its side, you know, against the fence or something so the water can't collect in there? Because kids love those little pools and any way that they can back, go back outside into the backyard and get in there, they will absolutely do it. So really, I could talk about this with you for hours and hours of all of the different things that we can do to try and prevent drowning and water safety with our kids. We've talked about pools very, very briefly. We talked about Laurie Lawrence, Kids Live Do the Five, and I'm gonna put a link to that in the bottom. We talked about knowing CPR, and I've just glossed on this because there's so much information there, but what I really wanted to focus on today are particularly two areas in your home. One, how are you collecting water, particularly if you've got water restrictions around where you are, which a lot of us do at the moment. And also thinking about the inflatable and clamshell pools in the backyard. What do you have around your home? They're two incredibly important things. And one other thing before we finish today that I really want to mention is please remember, one, Inflatables are not rescue devices. Floaties on your child does not mean that they can't drown. Always keep your little ones within arm's reach of you. Drowning is silent. It is not all that splashing in the movies that you see. It absolutely isn't. Drowning is silent. A child will just can sink to the bottom. An older child, they may look like they're just treading water and they're down, they're not shouting for help. That means not that you can't shout for help, you can't wave when you were drowning. It's really important to remember that it's not what you see in the movies. Really, really important, okay? And that you need to know what to do. CPR is key. Hopefully we're able to prevent it, but if for some reason we haven't been able to, then knowing how to do CPR gives your child the best chance possible at a good outcome. So I've just touched on a couple of elements today. We will bring you more and provide you more information, but what I would love you to do, please, is comment below if there is another um, subject that you would like us to talk about please just let us know what that is and we will endeavor to be bringing these Facebook Lives regularly and tag any of your friends who you think will benefit from this information. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you have any questions, now is the time uh, while we're live to be typing it into the comments below. Um, Nicole Floyd has said, thank you for the summary. It was helpful. I look forward to watching the replay. So Nicole, we will put this on our page so that that is ready to go for you so that you can um, come back and watch this at any time. So we always post these in uh, the video section or on our timeline um, uh, on our Facebook page at CPR Kids. And please remember guys, tell us what you would like to know. And if you haven't booked into a CPR course, please contact us. We run CPR and first aid classes 
pediatric specific. If we're not in your area, we will help you find somebody else that is, but don't put it off any longer and book into your class today. Thanks for joining us everyone. Bye-bye.